and for Prophetess Miriam Obina above it all in order of hierarchy we appreciate the Spirit of God at the top first as we appreciate God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit the Trinity God three in one hallelujah glory be to God please take your seat hallelujah um, we appreciate God for this week's um, theme. What do men say? I am in the I am ministries revival week. Hallelujah! Praise the name of the Lord. And um, as I'm speaking to um, ministers, and I know to the you that is watching us, you see right now, as I speak right now. Pastor has been speaking about the fear of God. And um, you know, it, it is so interesting that Noah, out of revelation, received an instruction to build the ark. But it was through fear of God that he proceeded to build the ark. I'll tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, it goes beyond you receiving revelation. It goes beyond you asking God for revelation. Rather, on top of that, ask him for the fear of God upon your life that will make you carry out the revelation. Because as it was in the days of Noah, is how the scene is the scenario is replaying itself. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news: the devil has never won it. He has never been in control. No matter how bad, no matter how, uh, how hopeless the situations are, it has he has never been in control. Praise the name of the Lord. He has never been in control. Because even in the times of Noah, when men were wicked, still God used someone to save a generation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And um, that is why it is so important in this time. Um, I appreciate God because uh, we have just 
ended the week of um, what do men say I am and uh, Pastor Ellen has just given us an exposition on what the godly fear is hallelujah you know as we're beginning off in the early morning um, Apostle Isaac gave us one powerful statement he said spirits always want to express themselves whether God or the devil did you know that what am I trying to say God always wants to express himself in your life it's just because it is you who's most times absent-minded and if you give him the chance he is more than willing to express himself in your life praise the name of the Lord hallelujah I don't know if I'm speaking to someone so that is why you in this season especially now whereby people are looking for plan B people are looking now people you have you hear statements like we've waited on God and now we, we, we are we, it seems let us let us go on and do plan B when you hear such statements it is not that God is quiet it is because many a times it is the hearts of men that have grown dull praise the Lord so it's very important that even now God is still existing God is still blessing us God is still he's doing he's still doing everything that is why it is not that God has ceased working no it is just that he is just waiting upon the people that understand the principle to get to him hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I was sharing something with one man of God this morning and he said to be to grow and to be rooted in God are different things to grow anyone can grow but to take root is very different it's, it's, it's not the same thing weeds grow but they don't have roots you see and the problem is this person has made the good a good exposition the problem is that as the church we are so much comparing the the, the sprouting of weeds and forgetting that with us God wants rooting it's not about it's not about because when you look weeds grow faster if we, if, if you can look at um, maybe an example anywhere a weed when you've planted maybe beans or, or cassava or anything and, and, and the weeds sprout before the cassava comes out the weeds have taken almost over the whole colony Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you this. With the kingdom of God, it is about us getting root. It's, uh, tell your neighbor, get root. Hallelujah. No wonder Jesus comes to the fig tree. And he looks at it. See the difference between uh, growing and rooting. He looks at the fig tree. Because at that time, Jesus needed fruit. <laughs> and when he looks at the fig tree, I want, I'm, I'm speaking about, we're still talking about the parables of Jesus. And especially this time, we're talking about the faith, good and faithful. That is what we talked about that time. And it's what we're still talking about today. The good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. So, Jesus comes to the fig tree. And when he looks at it, the Bible says, it had leaves. It had grown. It was of age. <laughs> but, what produces the fruit is the rooting any one of us can grow hallelujah every day you are growing but to be rooted is something different because when you're rooting that is when you are receiving what is going to help you to stand firm that is the, that is the essence i remember in the science that we did we know that a plant what makes a plant produce the fruit is because it has nutrient it taps it from somewhere the root does that glory be to god we as ministers ladies and gentlemen it is not about uh how many months or years you spent in church hallelujah it is about the small things your relationship with god your seeking of god your reverence of god these small, small things are the things that make you to have fruit. Otherwise, if you came to church because of growth, what is growth? The cars. 
the bank accounts you know we are seeking God for marriage it is true thank God for that but that is part of the growth any man of God will tell you it is his greatest joy when when they look at the church and it is full of congregants that is their great joy because they think the church has grown hallelujah do you know by the way <laughs> that is why this is a very big danger in the church when men of God look at gifts gifts will cause the church to have a multitude it will have caused the church to have an overflow that is why you look at churches that are led by evangelists apostles these churches flood so fast but if a church does not have rooting you know why of all the ministries are, one time they're teaching about just about the fivefold and they said you know why this is the, what they call the bible teacher why the bible teacher is on this finger you know why <laughs> The prophet is this one the apostle is this one this is the one of the bible teacher <laughs> you know why <laughs> of all the fingers this looks like it does not have significance but have an itch in your nose and you'll understand why this finger is needed <laughs> have any disturbance in your ear and you know why this finger is needed <laughs> why because it reaches areas where these other folk cannot reach that is why teaching is a must for a church to be rooted seasons comes and season go one thing i know about church congregants is that you never rely on them they are they are inconsistent <laughs> it has been proven by from history praise the name even you see sometimes even ministers if i had a choice i would have run away to go to another ministry <laughs> Ooh, i'll tell you this <laughs> hallelujah but the reason why there is need for teaching is that you you become different from the congregants who seek god for for money for breakthrough for you know whatever or whatever it is for you you are rooted and this is what makes the church strong the church is strong not by the number of the congregation the church is strong by the people that stand in the seasons when there is fire you think church is strong because of congregation <laughs> i'll tell you what makes the church strong jesus had 12 disciples and this toll of despite the fire of persecution they still stood why because he took time to teach them he took time to invest in them tell you them and tell them you shall not be wasted hallelujah you that sacrifices and endeavors to make sure that you are here i pray that you will not just for the sake of making of appearances come you that is watching us online don't just come for the sake of making appearance but let your prayer always be that in the end of these sessions you are rooted one of the mysteries about this morning glory is this this morning services is this praise the name of the lord by the time the main service is going on you already have roots you are different from the one that comes at at midday or at one or whatever you you have roots and you know what a tree you know the strength of a tree is by the what is by the strength of its root hallelujah no wind can uproot that you you, you, you let me tell you personally i think said it on the man said that what you go through let another person who does not know god go through it they will collapse To some people, not having 100,000 in their pocket just for a, for a few minutes, you ah, can commit suicide. But for there are times when you lack, but you still appear. <laughs> oh, goodness, hallelujah. And it's not that you will not receive, you receive it, but 
it is about the rooting it's about the rooting because in the end when god blesses you you'll have capacity to support it hallelujah so the essence is that you shall have root matthew 25 I'll not waste a lot of time because um, we shall be preparing to get onto the live broadcast that on Target TV. We bless God because God connected us by His mercies to an online, and, and I mean not just online, but we are also live streaming on Target TV in just in the next hour. Hallelujah. So, um, Matthew 25. And I will not, all right, let, let, let's, let's get there and read. But I want just to read from verse 14, Matthew 25. I would want us to read from verses 14. And, um, we are going to end because where I want specifically to make emphasis is uh, from verse 20 to 21. That's my main. But let us go on and read from verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is how the Bible starts it off. And of course by now as students of doctrine we understand when Jesus makes special reference to a phrase like that, the kingdom of heaven. So for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And then to one he gave five talents and to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straight away took his journey hallelujah i remember i told us i will not go back for those of you that want to get the series i've been teaching about the series you can go back and refer to last sundays about this then 16 the bible says then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained more two but he that had received one went and dug in the earth and hid the Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reconciled with them. And he that had received five talents came and brought other five, saying, Lord, you delivered into my hand five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more talents. Can we read verse 21 loudly, three and go? Yes. And his Lord said unto him, What? Well done, good, and what? Speak again, well done, what? Good and faithful. So, I spoke at that time and I said, Many are good servants, but not many are faithful. You're good with your talents. You're good with your attendance of church. You're good with... But the issue is faithfulness. You have to have both checked. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there are two statements that are going to be made on the judgment day. Number one is going to be, well done, good and faithful. The other one is going to be, I never knew you. Depart from me. Praise the name of the Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. So what does it mean when the Bible speaks of you as faithful? Because many of us are good. Many of us are good. Hallelujah. You are good, you know. But what is it when the Bible asks about faithfulness? On top of you being good, what does it mean when the Bible then asks or refers to faithfulness. Is what I want to speak of in the next 10 or so minutes. And then 
we shall be closing. Well done. Somebody say well done. Good and faithful servant. Please, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. Well done, good and faithful servant. Paul makes a very powerful statement in regards to the faithfulness of a servant or of a minister. Amen. And here, I just want part A. I mean, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 28. I just want the first part. And it's very important because we understand why Paul mentions faithfulness. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 28 says, Yes, give me the first part. But let a man examine let himself. Let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. Ladies and gentlemen, faithfulness cannot go without a man examining himself. And of course we know, on our own we cannot examine ourselves. The Spirit of God is the one that can check us. But let a man examine himself. That is what the Bible says. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're very quiet. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What do we examine? Your motives. Very important. Many a times we're in the church, we are, we, you know, can you get to see what you to enter into a drive fast? It is true. Sow a seed. What is your motive? If you fail on that checklist, because these are the things that heaven is going to check your faithfulness it is not about you singing the loudest or you clapping your hands the loudest or you dancing the most there's something more what is the motive behind what you do this is a checklist praise the name of the lord hallelujah well done good and faithful servant two we examine attitudes some of you you are ministering but i the attitude that you use in in service <laughs> let me tell you you are wasting time if you have a, a negative attitude <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. attitude one person puts it this way. It is a common English saying, and we almost most of us know it. Attitude determines what. In other words, your attitude determines your promotion. It is not your availability that determines your even in prayer. Sometimes that is why, let me tell you. <laughs> Sometimes people lead prayers here. And then you give this attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I see Apostle Isaac here with the microphone. Pray, 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 pray. pray. Then some of you, you are. See. <laughs> if I were you, I would have gone back home, covered myself and slept off. Your attitude. You see these things, they look small. But concerning faithfulness, it is a very big landmark. It is a very big yardstick. Some certain days I, I, I pass by here and you find the ushers cleaning the chairs. Who? Let me tell you, it is a ministry. Before you touch that chair, maybe if it is even if it is worship team, before you hey, see. That microphone will be the launching place for your glory. Or it will be the launching place for your downfall. That chair you clean will either launch you goodness. You see, that is why I usually have... Mom, let's answer people. God, we have cleaned chairs. We have always been the ones who stand on the pulpit to sing. We have always... But why is it... What attitude are you using? Added towards your leaders. 
Because you will not say that you have an attitude towards God while you have an attitude. And also, of course, the person who God has put us before you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. It's very important that this issue called the attitude is handled because it is a check of our faithfulness. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, Praise the name of the Lord. I said, Motives, I said, Attitudes, I said, Thoughts. You see these things. You cannot be here, especially with the issue of attitude. Mama Tero Tugamba. You cannot be, for example, whichever ministry, whether Asha or Washipa or whichever, and they tell you, do this. Mom usually, usually told us a story. There are times when her spiritual father in the seasons of training used to, maybe after a moment of, of rebuke or something, then he tells her, do this for me. Maybe prepare the breakfast for me. And now, when, when, when after, after preparing the breakfast, because within her she's angry, she's sulking, when she brings the food to the man of God, he says, wow, I'm not going to eat it. Your attitude, I cannot eat this food. Can you imagine? I'll tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. This is the truth out there in the, in the world. Because some of you may say, no, maybe we're having other choices, we're having other options. Out there in the world, it is volatile. It is not standing. I was speaking to people recently and I said there's a billionaire who lost all their billions just last week. I was hearing it. This person was a, uh, the company is called FTX. Very powerful billionaire, but he made one blunder and all the billions were lost like that. <laughs> you know, in this generation, it is so easy to become a billionaire, by the way. You don't need to amass money on a bank account. Ah. Uh -uh. Nowadays, there are other ways, legitimate ways you can go and God will bless you and you're a billionaire just in a month, in a, in a week or something and you already have it. Hallelujah. So, what are your thoughts? Very important. You see, there's a, verse, there's a scripture that says, we are just servants. Even if we've done it, make sure that you know that, number one, you're a servant. Because that is the mark. If you do, for, if you ever forget that, you know, ma'am. Of recent, we have an, a dilemma that now we have uh, men of God building castles, building, uh, you know, be, being kings and chiefs instead of them understanding that they are stewards. Well done, good and faithful servant. One time, Pastor Benny, and I think most of you had the story. Pastor Benny was was in the presence of God and uh, I think mom's told us the story it was after a series of the lamb had walked and you know all this and one time he had I think it was Reverend Yongi Cho speaking about um, you building materials for heaven you having your home in heaven and so Pastor Benny one time told God ah you know like if you're a friend with God and he says it seems my mansion now is, is you know I have a big mansion it seems yeah based on what the ministry and all that he was doing. It is so interesting that when he got a glimpse of seeing what was in heaven, in the land where his mansion was, there was a much bigger mansion, bigger than his actually. It did not even, his did not look like boy's quarter. And so, what interested him is that when he tried to find out who the owner of the bigger mansion was, because he thought maybe it was a bigger evangelist or something, <laughs> Out of the big mansion came an intercessor. The old woman that was interceding for him in his church. She was the owner of the big man. Ah! So, it disturbed Benny. Hinn. How does this intercessor? She does not even chase demons. She does not pray for the sick to be healed. How does it be that she has the bigger mansion than mine? Hmm. 
is until when the Lord told him, all the crusades you've been doing, this intercessor has been the one supporting you with her prayers. So when you see the miracles and the breakthroughs and the blind eyes opening and all this, it is because of this intercessor. That is why you saw the results. Ah, surprising. But you know that some of that here right now, and especially the body of Christ in Africa, an intercessor is the most despised person. Intercessor. I've never heard of a minister who probably stands and says, I'm intercessor so and so. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And yet, it's very important. So, examine yourself in what you do. That's a very powerful mark. Praise the name of the Lord. Examine the motive behind what you do. Ask the Spirit of God. You know, always have this. That is why it is very important. You know why as ministers it's very important that as the month is ending, you don't just prepare. Your, what they call preparation for the new month. It's not just opening gates and doors for your new month. Ask the Spirit of the Lord to give, a, give you an evaluation of how you have served God in that month. It's very important. It will help you a lot. Otherwise, don't be part of the naive and and if, uh, what do they call it that will always complain to God we have served you how come we don't see results some when they look at the examinations you know what it means to sit from primary one up to primary seven and then when the results of your PLE come back you have failed that is how many ministers are we have sat seven years but primary but the end of year exam showed you that you did what So it means repeat. I know if I'm speaking to someone, may you not be amongst those that are going to repeat. Hallelujah. May your years be worthwhile. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. Please, I think I'm reading my last or second last, and then we shall be closing. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 25. And yes, please quickly. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 25. 1 Corinthians 9 25 says. What does it say? And everyone who competes for the prize. They say everyone that competes for a prize is temperate in all things. Always will be temperate. Can I get another version? That, what is that? That is King James. NIV, whatever you have read for me. Because when we say temperate, someone may think, does it mean that the temperatures are high or are they low? What does, <laughs> what does it mean when they say temperate? Okay? Praise the name. It just simply means there needs to be a self-control. There needs to be a discipline. Read it for me, yes? NIV says, Yes. Everyone who competes in the game, Everyone who competes in the game, goes into strict training goes into a strict training how are we going to help ourselves ladies and gentlemen in self-examination ladies and gentlemen it is not demonic huh i don't hear you it is not, let me tell you you getting yourself out of a comfort zone that one is part and parcel of ministry huh? don't wait for mama to say fasting and prayer if you as a minister, I'm going to tell you what is going to help you examine yourself. Get out of a comfort zone for a while. Separate yourself for a while in a season to seek God. In fasting and prayer. If not, if you are outside that, you cannot be effective. Finish up for me because my time is up. Yes. Everyone who competes in the games goes into Everyone strict training. Everyone that competes in the game, this life, ladies and gentlemen, is a competition. In ministry, you're not the first minister. 
you're not the first pastor, you're not the first evangelist, you're not the first usher. There are others that have been ahead of you. There are others that are with you. And it is a competition. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, there is a price for your ministry. There is a price. You're not just here to sing and, and do whatever you're doing and play keyboard and usher and clean chairs just for the sake of it. There is a price for your ministry. There is a price. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen. If you forget of all the ones I've spoken, remember this one thing. There is a price for your ministry. There is a price to be won for your ministry. And that is why it is so important that in all that you do, put this in the back of your mind. There is a price. Finish it up. They do it to get a crown. They do it to get a crown. That will not last. And yet, you speak about athletes. This crown will not last. Continue. But we do it to get a crown. But we do it because there is a crown. That will last forever. Praise the name of the Lord. I discover that the meaning of these two. Why does Paul put both and he compares the both of them? Because this is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not just that we are going to have a crown in heaven. There is a crown for us even here on the earth. There is a prize that we have to achieve. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, don't you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servant. Haven't you ever read that statement? God delights when you prosper. But this is what it is. The prosperity is not I claim. The prosperity is because there is a prize you've won. Glory be to God. He said glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well done. Good and faithful servant. I pray that everyone that is watching me. Even you that is here this morning. You shall have the qualification for the price of your ministry. Why don't you lift up those hands as you're standing up on your feet. Because I know the price sometimes, the price is there, but at times the journey to the price is where the issue is. Tell him, Father, help me. Help me always. Help me to achieve this price. May I not labor in vain. May we not labor in vain, the Spirit of God. But for all that we are doing, that we shall receive and achieve the price of the calling of your ministry. Whatever ministry that you are handling, you as a minister, you that is watching us, there is a price that is attached to that ministry. So tell him, Lord, help me discipline myself. Help me have a season of examination of myself. May all attitudes that are not aligned with you change the attitudes, change the mindset, change me, oh God, that I shall always reflect the price of my calling in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We appreciate the online ministry. Um, we're getting off for a while and then we're going to be coming back again as we are going into the time of praise and worship as we prepare for the ministration um, and the program on Target TV. But God bless you and uh, a blessed morning in Jesus' mighty name. Shalom and shalom and shalom. God bless.